So the topic in this video is how to code faster, right? So why do you want to code fast? Well, obviously the faster you code, the more you can get projects done, the more efficient you are at your job. So I'm going to talk about a little tips, a couple of tips and tricks that you can follow to kind of improve your coding speed and your efficiency. And this is going to be kind of an informal talk. So I'm just going to kind of list them out, maybe add some overlays to kind of explain what I'm talking about. But the first one, this one is invaluable as your project gets larger and larger. If you're on a team of like 10 or 20 developers and they're all pushing code and files to a code base, this tree browser over here can become really, really unmanageable and you can have like thousands upon thousands of files. So the first tip and trick is learn how to use your fuzzy search. If you don't know what a fuzzy search is, usually in your IDE, there is a keyword or a shortcut on your IDE that you can type to basically search your entire project for a particular file. So let's say I wanted to find one of the Python files that I worked on for doing hangman. I could do, I could type hangman and that'll give me all the files in my hangman folder. And then I could just type in M A I N to get the main file, click enter. And then boom, you have your file that you're looking for. And it was pretty straightforward, right? The alternative is you have to search through all of your folders. And sometimes you have to dive into folders and then dive into more folders and dive into more folders. And it's just very, very slow. And often you kind of know what you want to work on, what feature you're trying to fix or implement, what bug you're trying to fix. So again, look how cl uh, quick this is. Right, and if you actually name your files more specifically, like I could just quickly go to that file, or I could say chat room, I want the client or the package lock, or I want beginner JavaScript stuff, I want my histogram, right? See how quick it was to kind of search your project and get the file and open it that you wanted. So in VS Code, that's what I'm using here, the key combination is Command P on Mac. I don't know what it would be on Windows or Linux, but it's probably like alt p or control p but command p opens up that prompt and i'm sure there is a alternative method up here i don't even use the alternative method so uh bear with me we're gonna find it here it is command palette no that's not that's not it here it is go to file so go go to file command p the same idea here, I can just type in that and it goes to the file. Super important to know. So let's talk about another very important uh, tip when you're using your IDE. And again, most of these tips will apply to any IDE. If you're using Atom, Sublime, VS Code, PyCharm, they usually all have a fuzzy search option. And if they don't, I suggest finding a different IDE. The next important one is searching grepping your entire project, right? So a lot of people call it grepping because if you do it in the command line or the terminal, you usually use the grep tool. But sometimes you want to find a particular string inside of a file, right? So let's say if I want to, I knew what I was looking for, right? So let's say I'm looking for um, attempts, right? I did a tutorial. <clears throat> I did a hangman tutorial where we have attempts on a player. And let's say your hangman project became like 100 lines, 100 files, and there was a constant that I used like everywhere throughout my code base. So let's say we wanted to find everywhere we use that constant. Well, in VS Code, you can right click on your folder and say find in folder. And notice here there is a shortcut for it. So this shift, uh, command shift F, and that's actually what I'm be doing here. Um, well, actually, command shift F searches your entire project. So let's do that. Command shift F. Or you can click on this magnif magnification icon over here. So let's just do it the old fashioned way. Click on the icon. I could type attempts equals. And that finds me every file and the actual locations where those are found. And this is again, super, super useful if you have a constant that's using like 100 different files and you might want to rename it or refactor it. And if you're doing a dynamic typed language like JavaScript or Python, this is usually the only way you can kind of refactor code unless your IDE is super smart. So again, let me just show you that in action. Let's just pretend that we know a couple of things, right? Let's say I could do um, socket IO. Boom. 
that'll give us every um, file that has socket IO. And notice that there's a lot of package JSON stuff. So what I could do here is in files to include, I could say star.js, and that'll give us all the JavaScript files that have socket IO in them. So that tip and trip it, trick is super useful and the better you are at it and the more you use it, the quicker you're going to be at navigating your project, right? Anytime you spend time diving through this tree and trying to find what you're looking for, it's just time wasted, right? So if you could do fuzzy search or search the entire project, then that is going to improve your efficiency. All right, so another really useful tool you can use in your IDE is your find in file, right? So in VS Code, if you go to go, I believe there's a like find. Here it is, find, edit find. Wow, that, that was either I'm blind or... Anyway, so if you click find, you can search your file for what you're looking for. So again, if I typed in attempts, that'll give me all instances of attempts in my file. And a cool little feature is on the right over here, you'll notice that there's little yellow boxes that kind of highlight where those instances occur. So that's kind of useful. Um, get really good at using this command. There's a shortcut, usually it's command F. And you can use that to kind of search through your file. A nice little shortcut is basically, I think you can just um, double click the word and do command F. And notice how whatever I have highlighted automatically comes up in my finder. So although this is pretty well known, I mean like you should know how to search a file, there's sometimes where I'm like coding and I'm just like searching through the file by hand for something and I forget that there's a find command. It's like why am I wasting time scrolling through a file that has like 500 lines when I could just use the find command. So if you just get into the habit of always just using find, right? <clears throat> even navigating, like let's say I'm looking th through some code and I want to go to my join method, right? So I know what I'm looking for. I could either move my mouse and click it, or I could just do control F join. I could do control F join and that'll take me to it. Or hidden and that'll take me to it. And then my cursor's on here. So if you don't even want to use the mouse, you could just get really good at finding and that will kind of improve your efficiency. So the fourth tip and trick is the go-to line number. So a lot of times when you're coding, you'll get like an error in your terminal saying that like, hey, an error happened on line 253, right? So usually you can click on the actual like thing in your terminal, but not all the time because sometimes the error happens in your browser and you want to go back to your code and kind of click on that. And there's probably other instances. I don't know if I give you good examples, but... Basically, there is a command to go to a line number. And the shortcut on my Mac is Control G. And I could type in a line number here and go straight to that line if I want to. So again, you're just becoming really efficient at navigating your file. And once you've and once you're kind of used to your file and like you know where things are, it might be that you want to go to the top, right? So you say go to line one. Or go to line 50 if you know how long your file is. Go to line 500, right? So if you get really good at using the go to line, That'll help you when you're trying to debug or go to a place or a line number that you know. So if you want to see this all in action, let's say there's a file that I want to go to. I know what line number it is. I know I'm looking for a keyword called like attempts. So I could just fuzzy search main. I go to attempts, you know, go to line 50. Boom, I'm there. All right, so pretty straightforward. I didn't have to touch my mouse at all. Um, and that was the best example, but... As you are working on a project and you kind of get familiar with it because that's what you're doing eight hours a day, you kind of get used to where you're going into your file structures and you're not going to be needing the tree browser as much. So we did fuzzy search. We did search through the entire project called grepping. We did find and file and then we did go to line number. So those are four awesome things you should learn to become faster at coding and navigating through your, your code base. Um, I want to kind of talk about a, a different um, approach. Obviously, coding is all based around typing, right? There's a lot of typing and there's a lot of mouse movements. So if you want to become faster at coding or more efficient, be sure to practice clicking on things, right? So there's often times where like I misclick on things 
because I don't know, I'm using a new mouse or my sensitivity is too low or too high. But every time that you try to go somewhere and you misclick, right, you can actually like practice this, like just get into muscle memory. Okay, I wanna click on this icon here. See, see right there, I went too high and that slowed me down by a couple of seconds because that top bar came down. Right, but if you become really efficient at navigating to the icons and the things that you want, right, let's say I wanted to highlight this O, like the, the player's head down here, right? So the quicker I can go down here and double click it, the better, right? You see how it's kind of like, I should actually practice this. But you see how I'm getting close to it, but I'm not getting on it. If you get really good at just quickly dragging your cursor or your mouse directly to what you want, That'll save you time over the uh, over the days and the weeks, right? The more accurate you are is going over to what you want and not double clicking on something wrong, the better. Um, and these are just really, really small micro efficiencies that you can practice or you'll just learn over time. But just keep those in mind that if you notice that you keep on misclicking on stuff or you are highlighting stuff, but you accidentally highlight the wrong thing, just practice getting better at it. All right, another micro efficiency, and this is also kind of something with like your IDE, is Command D. So there's so many times where I'm in a file, I want to refactor a variable, and instead of doing Control F, like I could do Control F if I wanted to replace attempts with something else, like my attempts, I could do this and then click on Replace All, and that would replace all of my instances of attempts with my attempts. You see how many clicks that took? You see how slow that was? One approach I like to take, um, and this doesn't work all the time, like if I were to try to replace attempts, it would probably replace max attempts too. But if your variables are named pretty uniquely, one approach I love doing is Command D. So double click on the letter or the word and hold down Command D. And that'll highlight all of your instances inside your file. And notice here, it went ahead and updated max attempts. So that is a little bit faster. It depends on how big your file is and how many words you have. But if, you know, let's, let's do another example. Is game over? So let's say I wanted to rename that. So efficiently, I could just double click it. Is game still running? And notice I just updated that in like four different places and you saw how quick that was. Right. The alternative is I'd have to do this, is game over, open up this thing, is game still running, click on replace all. And that was just a couple of extra steps that you, sh you really shouldn't need to take. And if you can cut those steps out, you'll become faster at coding. All right, so I think we covered a lot of good ones. Some of the ones that are not related to the IDE. So another one that's not really related to your IDE is typing, right? You spend a lot of time typing code, right? You type these colons, curly braces, semicolons, exclamation marks, blah, blah, blah. The more efficient you are at typing out what you want, the less time that you're going to spend going back and fixing stuff, right? So if you keep track of how many times you're pressing backspace or going back to a variable and changing something you mistyped, if you can fix those little mess ups, you can become really efficient, right? So if for some reason you're really bad at doing underscores, like you just saw there, I typed an A. So let's just say I want to type max attempts a couple of times. Right, I keep, I keep screwing that up. See? So as you're typing stuff, like your brain tells you, okay, I want to type this out, but then your hands sometimes don't execute that properly. So one thing you could do is you could just slow it down. Again, I'm just messing stuff up. So my point is, keep track of how many times you're pressing backspace. And if you notice that you're going back and fixing stuff a lot, you probably have an issue with typing certain characters and that you can practice that by just typing out code, right? And you'll, you'll get better at it over the years of just typing your Python code. But I'm doing a new language right now, Python, right? So I'm not used to typing Python. It's a different syntax than JavaScript. But I guarantee you, if I spent like an hour just practicing typing Python code, I would become a lot more efficient at coding Python. So that is another really useful tip and trick that I don't think people take seriously. Typing speed is not that important, but typing accuracy 
can help you prevent bugs, especially if you're using a dynamic language, and it can help you kind of build out projects at a much rapid pace. Now there's tips and tricks for like using your actual operating system, right? You need to become familiar with using Mac if you're coding on a MacBook or become familiar with using Windows shortcuts and how to navigate to your start menu, how to quickly load up icons. Like for instance, on Mac, what I typically do is I have virtual windows with my editor at one slot and always to the left is my um, browser. Let me open a new tab here. All right, so this is typically how I have it set up in my workday. I have my editor on the right in my browser on the left so that I can see my website by quickly just going over, right? That took less than a second to switch over to a different context. Some people like to have their browser window open to the right of their editor. Some people use dual screens or dual monitors or three monitors. I like using just a one monitor so that my eyes don't have to move back and forth. Like my neck never moves when I work, just my eyes. And typically my eyes stay pretty centered, right? Because I'm looking at a smaller monitor and I don't have to move much as I kind of go back and forth between my windows. So the main takeaway is find something that works for you. Find something that you find is most efficient for you in your um, environment setup and get used to it. Keep it consistent, right? Don't one day have your, your browser on the left and then the next day your browser is over here on the right for some reason because then you're wasting time like, okay, it's usually on the left. Oops, it's not there right now. Oh, it's because it's on the right for whatever reason. So make sure you keep it organized. You keep your stuff consistent. So every day you go into your computer, you know exactly where stuff is going to be. Right? So those, those are the main um, tips and tricks I'm going to give you for this video. And there's, again, there's probably a lot more. Be sure to leave a comment if you have your own suggestion as to how to improve your coding efficiency and speed. These are just some. I'm sure other developers have their own little um, ideas of how to improve. Again, if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and also subscribe for more content like this in the future. And again, my name is Cody Seibert and thank you so much for watching.